In the NFL, putting together a successful team requires not only the wherewithal to build a top-notch roster, but also the right coach. The right straw to stir the drink, so to speak. Which is why when you see an organization go in the wrong direction, it isn't always because there's an absence of talent on the field. At times, it can be because of the wrong coach. Or, you know, just a plain old bad coach. So without further ado, let us take a look back at every NFL team's worst head coach of all time. Arizona Cardinals, Dave McGinnis. I don't know who is worse. Dave McGinnis is a coach, or the Cardinals management team that signed McGinnis, who went 1-8 as the interim head coach into their head coach long term. If you think that's bad, not only did they re-sign and promote him, they proceeded to keep him in town for three more freaking years. During that stretch, Arizona never finished above fourth in the division, and never even eclipsed the 500 mark. Across four seasons, the Cards went 17 and 40, and was never a head coach in the league ever again. Lance Falcons, Bobby Petrino. Granted, he signed ahead of the infamous 2007 season, which was marred by Mike Vick's incarceration. But still, the way Bobby Petrino handled the entire ordeal was nothing short of horrendous. After a 3-10 start, he quit midseason to take a college job at Arkansas and did so by leaving a printed note in the locker room. Yeah, it doesn't get much worse than that. Baltimore Ravens, Ted Marchibroda. Given the Ravens' relatively short history and their strong track record, this was not a tough one to suss out. I feel a little bad for Marchibroda who took over an expansion franchise, which, hey, that's no slight task. But when you go 16-31-1 over three years, and the other two coaches in team history are well over 500 with a Super Bowl ring to boot, well, you're gonna draw the short straw. Buffalo Bills, Jim Ringo. Jim Ringo had a lot of success during his Hall of Fame career as a player, but for all the glory of two championships and ten Pro Bowl selections, his head coaching experience was equal parts bad. During his two seasons at the helm in Buffalo, he went 0-9 and 3-11. and Tough to get much worse than a 130 winning percentage. Carolina Panthers, George Seifert. Hard to believe that someone with a 114 and 62 career record and five rings as an assistant and head coach would make this list, but such is the curious case of George Seifert. But much of that success was on the strength of what Bill Walsh built, and in an ill-fated decision to prove his resume was a product of his own doing, Seifert took the head coaching job in Carolina ahead of the 1999 season. The team went from 8-8 eight eight to 7-9 before the wheels came off entirely with the 1-15 2001 season. The worst in franchise history and NFL history at the time. Chicago Bears, Mark Trestman. The Mark Trestman era in Chicago was short, but oh man, was that bad. Hailed as an offensive genius from his time in the CFL, Trestman struggled mightily to adjust back to the NFL game. He went 13-19 across two underwhelming seasons, during which his offense looked disorganized and incompetent. Cincinnati Bengals, David Shula. Nothing like the downfall of a good old-fashioned Nepo baby to bring a smile to the face. David Shula was promoted to head coach after just one year as the Bengals wide receiver coach and proceeded to go 19 and 52 having been given way too many chances to turn the ship around presumably only because of his name i mean it clearly wasn't anything to do with what was going on on the field cleveland browns hugh jackson this one's pretty easy. When you go 3, 36, and 1, and embarrass yourself and the organization on Hard Knocks and in your post-coaching media tour, yeah, Hugh Jackson is the lock for the worst coach in Browns history. Dallas Cowboys, Dave Campo. Campo earned the nod in Dallas because of what he did with a team that made the playoffs in back-to-back -back seasons before he took over. Three straight 5-11 and 11 seasons. Then, the second Bill Parcells took over in 03, the Cowboys were back in the playoffs. Huh. I wonder what the problem was. Denver Broncos, Josh McDaniels. Not only did Josh McDaniels force out their franchise quarterback, Jay Cutler, he also traded up to get Tim Tebow and got caught in a videotaping scandal of his own. At least when Belichick spied, he coached to a better record than 11 and 17. Detroit Lions, Rod Marinelli. Marinelli was one of those guys that proved to be better off as a coordinator than a head coach. He had the NFL's first 0-16 record in Detroit, largely because his defense allowed a league-worst 517 points. Case closed. Worst to do it in a long line of Lions losers. Good job. 
Green Bay Packers, Phil Bankston. It is tough to follow a legend, and well, that's exactly what Bankston was tasked with in Green Bay following Vince Lombardi's retirement. His record was on the high end for the coaches on this list, finishing 2021 and 1, but considering the standard of the organization, both at the time and really throughout its history, makes him the choice. Houston Texans, Dom Capers. Capers had a tough job running the show during the early years of the Texans organization, but considering he is one of three Texans coaches to never get the team to the postseason and the cumulative 18 and 46 record, he's got to take the cake as the worst in franchise history. Indianapolis Colts, Rod Dauhauer. Rod Dauhauer is another one-hit blunder whose lone season in Indy was so bad that he just had to be chosen. I mean, he was only saved from a defeated season by his termination 13 winless games into the 1986 season. Jacksonville Jaguars, Urban Meyer. Urban Meyer is a quintessential example of an amazing college coach who let his ego get the best of him when trying to make the transition to the NFL. Between the public incident at his bar in Ohio after a loss and the weekly embarrassment on the field, yeah, he's a pretty easy choice. Even for a rather meh franchise in the Jaguars. Kansas City Chiefs, Drake Gantz. Considering Kansas City's relatively rich history of successful head coaches and Gantz's pitiful 8-22-1 record, Frank is a natural choice for the worst in franchise history, especially after considering what Marty Schottenheimer later did with the same young core of players like Neil Smith and Dino Hackett. Las Vegas Raiders, Lane Kiffin. Lane Kiffin's time at the Raiders was unsuccessful, chaotic, and, well, a complete and total mess. His tenure was so bad, it was ultimately the nail in the coffin for Al Davis' reputation as an NFL mogul. He went from 4-12 year one, then was fired after four games through his second season in 08 giving him a cumulative record of 5 and 15. Though he allegedly opposed the selection of Jamarcus Russell, that too is a footnote of his time in Oakland, as well as the blow up with the aforementioned Davis at the end of his time there, which culminated in Davis publicly calling Kiffin a flat out liar who had brought disgrace to the organization, which gave Kiffin, at least in his mind, cause to poach the Raiders staff when he took a job with the Tennessee Titans further devastating the franchise and solidifying his place as the worst coach in Raiders history. Los Angeles Chargers, Kevin Gilbride. Kevin Gilbride, who is best known for his great run with Eli Manning during his time under Tom Coughlin with the Giants, had two ugly seasons as a head coach with the Chargers in what was an otherwise successful 20-plus year coaching career in the NFL. Gilbride won just six games before getting fired midway through the 98 season. Further tarnishing his time there, his offense, which was supposed to be his calling card, went from bad to worse, as it was 25th of 30 in 97 and 29th in 98. Los Angeles Rams, Bob Waterfield. Our younger viewers may not know this, but Bob Waterfield was a Hall of Fame quarterback from way back when, having played both for Cleveland and the LA Rams in the 1940s and 1950s. But when he came out of retirement to coach the Rams, it proved to be a huge mistake. He went 9-24-1, blemishing his otherwise fantastic legacy with the fans. Miami Dolphins, Cam Cameron. Cameron deserves a bit of slack for picking up the pieces after the tumultuous Nick Saban era, but when you go 1-15 thanks to only a last second December win, it's tough to pass the buck entirely. I'm sure he was much happier moving back to offensive coordinator duties in Baltimore, where he finished up his career with a Super Bowl win in 2012. Minnesota Vikings, Les Steckel. Les Steckel's time in Minnesota was as brief as it was awful. He took over for the legendary coach Bud Grant, and it went so poorly that the Vikings fired him after one 3-13 season and brought Grant right back into the fold. New England Patriots, Rod Rust. Though he had an all-time good coaching name, Rod Rust was the all-time worst head coach the Patriots have ever had. 1-15 with a negative 265 point differential. Yeah, it does not get much worse than that. Even the 0-16 2007 Cleveland Browns bested that by nearly 100 points. New Orleans Saints, Mike Ditka. For all his lore, Mike Ditka's time in the Big Easy was pretty horrendous. It started with two 6-10 seasons and was capped off with Ditka trading an incomprehensible package to move up and take Ricky Williams. Think about it. He sent all of their 1999 picks and two of their top three picks the following year to move up five and get Williams. Then they proceeded to go 3-13. and 13. Yeah, I bet they wish they kept those picks instead of listening to the whims of a desperate Mike Ditka. New York Giants, Ben McAdoo. After a promising start to his tenure in New York, Ben McAdoo threw some gel in his hair, got far too big for his britches, and 
Well, yeah, chaos ensued. It had to be bad for the first time head coach to get fired after posting a shocking 11 and five record in 2016. And yeah, it was. The Giants started the next season off two and 10, and in an attempt to save his job, he alienated Eli Manning, a franchise legend, broke his massive consecutive start streak, and essentially lost the entire locker room in the process. New York Jets, Adam Gase. It started off ugly with that bizarre googly-eyed press conference and, well, it didn't really get much better for Adam Gase in New York. He never really jived with Le'Veon Bell, the team's big offseason acquisition. Then he proceeded to try and make him as miserable as possible, all en route to a 9-23 record during a horrendously embarrassing two-year stretch. Even for the standards of a franchise used to be in the butt of the joke. Philadelphia Eagles, Marion Campbell. Marion Campbell took over one of the most exciting innovative offenses at the time, previously led by Dick Vermeil, and turned it into an absolute mess. The Eagles were 17-29-1 during his time coaching there which spanned from 1983 to 1985, much to the chagrin of management and the fan base. Because, you know, they actually had a talented roster during that stretch. Yeah, wasted potential. Pittsburgh Steelers, Walt Kiesling. This old time coach posted a winless season in 1944 when they merged with the Eagles and Cardinals because of World War II and a career record of 30, 55, and 5. And he was so stubborn that when the team's owner, Art Rooney, ordered him to stop starting every game with a halfback dive, he instructed his lineman to false start on the first play. While I certainly give him credit for his pettiness, it's hard to say that that is the behavior of a quality coach. San Francisco 49ers, Mike Singletary. Though he was electric on the gridiron, it appears Mike Singletary Terry was not exactly cut out for a head coaching gig. It was the embarrassing blow up with 49ers star tight end Vernon Davis, and then it continued to get worse. From 5 and 4 is the interim to 8 and 8 to 5 and 10, something that this franchise with an illustrious history was not used to. Seattle Seahawks, Tom Flores. Though Flores turned Jim Plunkett into a Super Bowl winner with the Raiders, he may have been a one-hit wonder of sorts, because his time in Seattle was an absolute disaster. His best season was a measly 6-10, and, and at its worst, his 2-14 Seahawks were downright terrible, especially considering Flores, who was considered to be one of the quarterback gurus of his time, had three different first-round quarterbacks to try and make it work with in Kelly Stauffer, Rick Meyer, and Dan McGuire. Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Greg Schiano. Greg Schiano like many football coaches, was a man with a planet-sized ego. And that was his downfall when he tried to make the leap to the pros of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. His erratic decision-making and troubling behavior, like labeling players he liked as Chiano men, and the subsequent demotion or trading of the others eroded any chance at building trust in that locker room. Tack on an 11-21 record, and Chiano has cemented his legacy as the worst Bucks coach amid a long line of incompetence. Tennessee Titans, Bill Peterson. Considering Peterson's best season was the 0-5 campaign you were fired in, it's safe to say that the former Florida State legend was the worst head coach in Tennessee Titans history. One win in 19 games, and a slew of anecdotes from his players about the coach's game day incompetence. That is a pretty tough scene. Washington Commanders, Steve Spurrier. Spurrier is another college coaching legend who didn't quite have the same success in the professional ranks. He consistently butted heads with ownership, though considering Dan Snyder's meddling, maybe it isn't all Spurrier's fault. Nevertheless, his tenure was dysfunctional and unsuccessful. And when you're a veteran coach, that is unacceptable, as is a 12-20 record. But who do you think is the worst coach in your team's history? Do you think we got it right? Let us know in this comment section below. If you liked this video and learned a thing or two, clicking the like button helps out a ton. And hey, we appreciate it. If this is your first time coming around to TPS though, subscribing is a great idea because we put out videos like this every single day. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.